Welcome today to a session on customer support and service module in VTiger CRM. Uh, prerequisite for watching this video is watch the introduction of customer support and service module in our channel, the link of which is put in the description. So in VTiger CRM, you can get customer support issues or listen to customer support issues in five different ways. The first is the customer comes to your service center or your place and physically tells you about his problem or her problem or makes a call. So at that time you press on this add case and you manually create a customer support ticket. Now here in this example, we have taken about a calibration center. So where the customer comes and physically hands over the instrument or sends the instrument by a post or something. So the service manager or the person receiving it manually creates this ticket. Now the second way of doing it is they can send you an email. So let's say an email on support at your domain.com something like this so you send a mail like this now this email uh, can be uh, sent to support at your domain.com and from there you can forward to a specific email id which we tiger has given and then you can see it creates a case over here in your system automatically it also links to the particular contact which has that email id so that's how the email to case works in uh, the v tiger crm the third way of creating a ticket is you can give a customer a portal to your customer the customer can log into the portal and then they can themselves create a case now here in the portal you can also expose a lot more functionality like for example an faq which is called as a knowledge bank a knowledge bank is something like whenever your service engineer solves a problem they can submit that solution to a knowledge bank and when that solution is reviewed and published it becomes available in the customer portal now the advantage of this feature is that the load on your customer service representatives or agents or service engineers or whatever role you have in your organization, it will be reduced because uh, major of their answers they can get over here and they need not create a ticket. But if they don't get the answer in the FAQs, then they can go here and then manually create a ticket by clicking on a new case. You can also notice that they can see what's happening on the case, the updates which happening on the case by clicking on that any document that they've shared, any updates that's happening, a whole lot of information they can uh, see on this customer portal. Now the third is on your website. So here if you see in our website, we created a web form. So here also the customer can come and put their name, title of the case, summary and the priority and upload any file and submit it. Now you can see that once they submit this, it automatically creates a case in the system. It also links to the particular name automatically. Uh, now the fifth way is a chat now you see you can put a chat on your website when you click on this chat they can chat with you and then in the back end you can see that uh, uh, the whoever is chatting with them the chat transcript comes over here and this chat transcript can be converted into a case so these are the five different ways how a support ticket can be created in your system viewers i would like to tell you if you have any questions any doubts while seeing the demo please see the comment section below please put your comments we'll be happy to revert back to you on your comments now we come and explain you on how the cases can be handled once the cases is created now let's take this example of a fluke calibrator which has come to the service center and assuming this is actually handled by the customer service manager or any uh, authorized representative they create this case once they create this case, what happens is automatically the contacts in the organization based on the details what you give in the case gets linked to this particular case. Uh, and what also can happen is uh, the first step what the service manager can do is if they're coming and bringing, giving an instrument, let's take an example of an instrumentation company. They can go ahead and link if this asset is already there, it was already serviced or they can create one new asset. New asset is nothing but they create the details of the instrument that they have received in the service center. So the uh, details of the asset can have the name of that uh, particular uh, instrument uh, and different details like the serial number. So if you can see, I'm showing you those details on the screen over here. What all information the service manager capture, the name of the asset, the serial number, you know, what product it belongs to, status you can say in service, it, it's assigned to whom, uh, date in service when you received it. Now this date sold, now assume you don't have this date, okay? So what we have is, you can see that uh, there is a small integration which is given on this case. So when you click on this button, get purchase date, so it sends a serial number to the backend financial system and based on that serial number, it gets the purchase date. 
Now this purchase date is important to see it is there in warranty or any such information what you want for you know analyzing you can get this when you click here you can see it went to the financial system called MF system from that it got, uh, sent the serial number and it got the purchase date. So this will be updated onto uh, the assets module as well. So, so that's how you can see that uh, assets module can be uh, uh, linked to your particular case. Yeah. Now once you li link the uh, assets module, uh, what you can do is uh, you can also uh, link it to a SLA. You can see whether there is a service level agreement which the customer has. So you can see these are all the kind of SLA policies which can be created in the system. So here you can see this. If you put the priority of the cases urgent, high, medium or low, based on that these escalations happen and these escalations can happen to different levels in your uh, organization. What I'll also like to show you is you have a services uh, contract modules also in the CRM. So let's assume that the customer has taken an AMC from you, annual maintenance. You can always search the name of the customer over here and see if it is there. So if that is not there, then you can say, so if you see here, they have not taken an AMC contract. So you can always ask them to take an AMC contract. So these are the things what you have in an AMC contract. In that case, if they have an AMC contract, you don't have to invoice that customer. It can be included in the service uh, AMC contract, what they have taken from you. Now, the next thing what I like to tell you is, as the uh, you know uh, things progress on this case the first step what uh, the uh, service manager can do is he can create a work order so when you create a work order it's more like a job card so you create that work order and you assign this work order to your service engineer so that's how uh, it came done and the service engineer then manages all his activities on the work order that's how uh, information can uh, percolate to the uh, person and then add more things uh, this is what happens and as the service engineer works the work order and updates the case status you can see the lot of notification which can go in the back end to the customer so you can see over here first when the case was assigned to the service engineer a notification like this can come uh, then next as the customer uh, status on the thing is progress you can see these are the kind of emails what the customer can get your case progress is progress to this then, you know, when he changes the status to something else, you know, it says uh, waiting for third term. So it can go till the stage, you know, where you can actually change it and close resolve the customer support issues. Hello viewers, hope you are listening to the video and putting your comments. As a video creator, it motivates me when you ask a lot of questions. And I know that you're really understanding what we are uh, putting on the video and motivates us to create more better videos for you. Okay, so now coming back, uh, when I click on this uh, cases, you can see I get a 360 degree view of what is the asset contact, which organizations link to, what are the work orders, what is the asset, any related cases. Now let's say this uh, is created as a work order and assigned to the service engineer. Now the service engineer takes up this work order and then he adds some spare parts what he needs. Now he can raise an indent to the serv uh, service inventory department uh, through a sales order which can be renamed as an indent also. And then he adds what kind of line items he requires. Based on that indent, you can have an approval system also on that sales order. And then that sales order is received by the uh, inventory department. And then they call the service engineer to give the uh, spare parts. While giving the spare parts, the inventory department can create a delivery note. As they create the delivery note, the stock in the inventory gets reduced. So you can see this is how the stock quantity in stock for that is right. So when they create a delivery note, the stock will reduce. Now, once the stocks are reducing, the inventory department can replenish that also. So we have a purchase order management system. So they can create a purchase order on a vendor. And when the purchase order is placed, the vendor can, uh, you know, uh, despite that, you also have a payments option where you can track what payments you have made to them. And then once this is received, you can actually create a, a receipt note and based on the receipt note again the stock gets replenished in the uh, stock so the stock will get added so now if you added 50 as the order it will become 150 when you create a receipt note so that's how you can manage the inventory this is one of the biggest challenges we see in service industry because they don't have a track on what's happening on the inventory this will definitely give you to have a good hold on inventory you can also take reports on uh, stocks which are getting low you know and you need to up, up that stock all that is pretty much possible by running your reports on uh, this module. Now, the next what I'd like to show you is once 
the service engineer finishes the servicing of this now he can go ahead and change the status to completed on this if you see over here here the status he can make it as resolved and before uh, he is making it as uh, resolved he can also uh, raise an invoice so he can convert this work order into an invoice now in this work order he needs to add some more items right it's not only the spare parts what you're going to charge the customer so you can add your uh, say let's say a service fee so you can click on this and select for your service fee let's say you have a uh, uh, servicing fee you can add that also so you can see servicing charges click on that that gets added into the system and then you click save and now you can convert this work order into an invoice so you can see the service charging everything has come over here the total bill is around 14500 now you can go ahead and create an invoice or even the service manager can create this invoice whoever is uh, authorized to do that so you create an invoice so this is how the invoice is created automatically the line items are covered and clicks on save now you can put the address so since i have not put the address uh, in the contact it's asking me but if you had put the address in the contact it it will automatically populate from the uh, contact address or the organization's address now the invoice is uh, ready you can see this is the invoice you can go ahead and uh, if you wish you can send this invoice also to the customer directly from the crm uh, you have an option where you can print it or send it as an email or save it into your computer different kind of options you can see over here so you click here and press this button you get those options so you can see you can change the format you can email with pdf save so all this is pretty much possible now once the invoices come you can also track your payments you can see over here you have the payment for it what payments you receive from them you can track that or that you also have options to give them an online way of payment you know you can give a raise or pay or any online payment link that also can be tracked over here and now the final and the second part of the thing is it's uh, feedback okay so once you're finished you definitely know to know what is the feedback you're getting so as soon as you change the status of the uh, case to resolve you get an email which goes to the customer now the customer has uh, you, you have the option you can manually send this or you can automate this uh, email which goes automatically to the customer so you can see over here this is how they ask an email goes to the uh, customer saying uh, okay please click on the smiley below to let know how you feel so they can click on one of these and when they click on this it also asks them to comment on what they would uh, you know felt like so let me show you how it looks like when they click on the uh, feedback this is about a case which is already closed so i'll just like to show you what happened when they click the smiley <coughs> So with this, uh, you can see the entire loop is closed. So you can see they clicked on this and whatever comment they put, you can see the comment is also happening on this. So with this, we complete the entire process of uh, customer service module. You also seen we can integrate. So in case you need to get some information from some other system to come into this, uh, some companies use uh, other systems. So we can always through the APIs integrate that. So happy CRMing up your customer service.